Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to look at these. These. <laughs> and this, this is an Autopot automatic watering system. This system is focused around this device here, which is uh, an auto valve. Now, this smart valve actually tops up the reservoir underneath the pots when the plants have transpired or used up uh, the water or nutrients in the reservoir uh, which the pots sit within. Now, uh, this allows you to have a external reservoir set up so that the gravity then feeds into the smart valve. The smart valve will then automatically feed the plants when they require it. So this video will have a number of parts to it. Uh, the first part will be a setup for an outdoor grow, and then we'll have a time lapse for an outdoor grow. There will be a setup for an indoor grow, which is brought to you by Spider Farmer, who have supplied the Spider Farmer SF2000 for a series of grows that I'll be doing. Links in the description to purchase. And then we'll have a time lapse of that indoor grow as well. I'll then take a look at the results of the grows. We'll have a discussion about the positives and negatives of this growing system. And then I'll let you make up your mind on what you think of the system and I'll give you some final thoughts of my own. Let's get to it. To set up the outside auto pots, I mixed uh, cocoa perlite substrate, 60 cocoa and 40 perlite. I then filled up the pots. I plumbed up the system. These pots are actually uh, a different kind of auto pot. Uh, they're an individual auto pot. So uh, I wanted to give both systems a try. Uh, they didn't come with a res, so I made my own by uh, drilling a 4mm hole in a bucket. I then threaded the 4mm tubing through and put a barbed T-piece in the bucket so that it would create a seal. And then I connected up the res to the pot. I then planted the seedlings and added on some clay pebbles to cover the top of the cocoa perlite so that if any moisture made its way to the surface or when I was top feeding, it wouldn't accumulate uh, algal growth. I pre-adjusted the pH before adding in my nutrients, checked the EC and pH, added the nutrients and water to the reservoir, and here you can see the smart valve filling up. I then top watered each plant and set up the time-lapse camera ready for the grow.
I use the same process here to set up the second grow. There you have it. Two extremely different styles of growing uh, used on the same type of auto pot system with the same plant. Now this is all capsicum. Uh, the difference you're seeing here is lighting. These plants are 51 days old. They're the ones I planted first and they're a really nice shade of green because they've been given time to grow uh, without being absolutely hammered every day by the sun. The reason being, these probably only get about six hours of full sunlight uh, because of the shading of the roof. Now, these ones were given 24 hour sun to start with, which was a mistake. Uh, I should have done 16 hours of light per day. And these ones were also watered, top watered, uh, a lot more than these ones after I'd experienced really slow growth uh, at the first stages of uh, their growth cycle. So the ones under the spider farmer lights received more top watering to start with, which got their growth accelerating at the start uh, than the ones outside. And these received more light. So I actually think I had the light too close and that 500 par was bit too much for the start of their growth um, and resulted in really small internode distances. So they're really squat plants compared to these ones which had to reach out and you can see them reaching out in that time lapse to try and get a little bit more light out of the day as the sun went over the roof and uh, sort of pulled away from the plant and they're leaning forward. They're both starting to flower. These ones have developed flowers on the top and these ones have developed flowers throughout the plant. Uh, these are really advanced flowers. They're about to fruit. Uh, you can see fruits forming in the flowers themselves. So the things I'd do again on this grow, I'd set up these plants in a full sun environment uh, and I'd top feed them from the start and for at least a week uh, regularly, like once or twice a day. And with these ones, I'd set up the light a further distance from them to start with uh, and reduce that part just to get them uh, stretching out a little bit so they can bulk out. And I'm hoping that will actually uh, result in a healthier color green and less of uh, this leaf curl and stuff like that. I also think that because uh, the plant was sucking up um, so much water to begin with, I've ended up with um, an overfeeding of nutrients, which has also resulted in some of um, the negative aspects that you can see happening on these plants. And that's all due to me having the light too close. All right, we've done the grow. So let's talk about some of the positives and the negatives of this form of hydroponic watering system. Now, let's start with the positives. 
it's auto watering. There's no electricity and there's basically no upkeep uh, once you've got those roots down into the nutrient uh, at the bottom of the res. Uh, your media will do some amount of wicking up to the top, but you will need uh, the top water, the top feed for the start of the growth of the plant. Uh, but once you've got the media wicking up, uh, the plants are happy, there's basically no maintenance. Uh, you can have a reservoir, however large you like, uh, mixed up with nutrients, uh, although it is recommended uh, that you have something circulating the water in that to keep the nutrients in solution. Um, but once your reservoir is full, you can then just leave it and the plants will draw the water as they need. As the reservoir empties at the bottom, uh, the auto valve will kick in, refill the reservoir, and then the plants take care of themselves, essentially. They drink what they need, and as they drink, it gets topped up. This also means that there's no wasted nutrients. Uh, the nutrients that it's getting topped up with are completely EC and pH balanced because that's the way you put them into the reservoir. And it means that you're not having to, you know, swap out an entire reservoir however often like you would with a flood and drain or an NFT or a Dutch bucket system. This is really good for expensive nutrients, uh, specifically cash croppers. If you're buying very expensive nutrients, this is a no waste option. Uh, it's not drained to waste. It's not recirculating uh, and it's an automatic top up essentially. That being said, um, the specifics of whether the plants use uh, or filter out more nutrients or water out of this bottom reservoir, I'm not particularly sure. So uh, whether the EC and pH in this bottom reservoir um, can be changed by the plants and whether the uh, nutrients can accumulate within uh, the media uh, and cause a salt buildup, which will then harm your plant. I haven't done enough testing with them. I have heard of people having problems, uh, but I haven't had any particular problems. I may have had um, a little bit too much calcium um, due to the cocoa fiber that I used, but uh, other than that, uh, it wouldn't be the auto pot's fault. So just something to keep in mind. Now, the negatives. This system is scalable. Uh, you can add in more auto pots to the system. Um, however, it's not cost scalable. Each auto pot system requires a smart valve. And this is, well, it should be a 20 cent piece of plastic. It's not, it's about uh, a 30 Australian dollar piece of plastic. Um, it's trademarked, so no one can copy it. It's a very expensive piece of equipment for the material cost. And each of these auto pot, pot systems uh, requires at least one auto valve. Uh, so I've spent 540 Australian dollars on the 12 pot system that I'm running. And for those US viewers, that's 385 US dollars. So the more pots you add to a system doesn't make it cheaper. Uh, the system will require you to purchase more auto valves. And as you expand it, uh, the cost doesn't come down per plant. It remains the same. This makes it a manufacturer's and a retailer's dream system. So when you watch videos giving you the positives and negatives of auto pot systems, just make sure that you're watching an impartial person's video because uh, retailers and the manufacturer of auto pot, who's an Australian manufacturer, good on you, you came up with something really cool. They're going to try and convince you to purchase this system because it is simple. Uh, it is scalable, but it's 
not cost scalable. So if you were to open a hydroponic farm where you were growing a certain type of hydroponic crop, you are going to run into a problem where you cannot grow more without paying more. You can't just add on an extra NFT rail or an extra 10 Dutch buckets. Uh, these are expensive and it's probably only good for a home growing system where you just want to be able to leave it and forget about it and let the plants do the work. And that brings me to my final point, simplicity. This is the simplest hydroponic system I've ever used. It's brilliant, uh, but at what cost? It's a huge monetary cost, yes. And from what I've seen, it can grow plants relatively fast due to the hydroponic method, but it is not as productive as those mechanical electrical systems where you are pumping water into and out of the roots of the plants and driving oxygen and nutrients and water in and out of the root zone and promoting that really fast growth. There is no method of introducing nutrients and draining nutrients except for in the bottom part of the pot and it's not fast enough to draw in and out oxygen. The plants will cause that rise and, and drop with the auto valve, but uh, it's not causing as productive a flood and drain as you will get in other flood and drain systems. Those are my thoughts. Uh, perhaps this system is for you. Uh, if you're just trying to grow a few plants, you can literally walk away from this for months. So for some people, that's going to be the deciding factor. Every person is going to have their own takeaway. I am obsessed with how fast hydroponics can grow plants. This is fast, but it's not the fastest method. Uh, I like keeping up on top of all my hydroponic systems. It's a hobby and the upkeep doesn't really bother me. But there are people out there that are just going to go, I want a system that takes care of itself. And this system's for you guys. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Like and subscribe for more. Make sure you hit that subscribe button too because YouTube's just been hounding me about it. Too many people are watching, not enough people subscribing. So yeah, subscribe, check me out on Patreon, and happy hydroponicking. See you next time.